Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever it's for you. I'm Cyclone, and this is Let's Play Training Simulator. So we got four more scenarios to do here. We're going to do one more today. We're going to get to the halfway point in our scenarios completed. If you were here last time, you saw that uh, I appeared to have an easy time, but it was actually not as easy as you would think. Uh, there were a couple of weir weird quirks you had to watch out for in the uh, Stormy Night scenario that would cost you a lot of points if you didn't catch them. And uh, they caught me. So I had to uh, basically redo parts of that one. But I made it look easy, and if you ever want to beat that scenario, hopefully you have your guide there for doing so. In the meantime, uh, I'm picking. I'm trying to pick another scenario here. Approaching the Alps is uh, a scenario from July, so I don't want to do that one yet because that's a nice summer scenario. I want to relax with that one after I get these hard ones out of the way. We have Afternoon by the Lake here, which is a March 24th, 2014, and it is a level 2 difficulty, so it's actually a very nice, uh, easy-ish run, I guess you could say, for me, if I want to do that. And then I have Early City Run, which is from April of 2014. So uh, these, I have both of the two-star scenarios up here, and after the previous couple scenarios, I kind of want to do one of these ones where I'm going to leave the stay time one for another time. I'm going to get this early morning one out of the way because I'm a little worried that the recording quality and your ability to see. Actually, you know what? Because the last scenario was nighttime, I'm going to do afternoon by the lake. That time we have a nice date. That way we have a nice daytime scenario. You can have a nice uh, cloudy, but st they're all, it's going to be cloudy anyway. Either cloudy or cloudy, so take your pick. Uh, we're going to do afternoon by the lake because that way we can come back to this one later. It'll be a little more difficult challenge we can do after we get one of these out of the way. And that means we have a nice easy two bar scenario to work with. So we're going to work on the two bar scenario. Let's go ahead and get into the afternoon on the lake, and I will see you. Well, let's read this first. What a lovely afternoon to spend by the lake. Take these commuters up to Starnberg on this BR-426 express passenger service. Let's hope the weather stays nice. It's going to rain, isn't it? It's going to rain. Oh, this looks nicer than last time. Afternoon driver, today's duties will have you running this 1307 passenger service to Starnberg. Or Stanberg, sorry, I keep doing that because I can't tell the R and the M apart, or am I reading that correctly? It is Starnberg. I should trust my first instinct. Starnberg. So that's Starnberg uh, that we're going to. Hopefully the weather stays nice so your pastors get a lovely view of the lake. Seems like lots of them have picnic baskets ready. Can I join them? No? We are starting at, uh, excuse me, we are starting at. Uh, the station Garmisch Partenkirchen. So we are going to be uh, taking the line all the way up to Sternberg. And if you're wondering where Sternberg is, Sternberg is, um, if you consider Munich to be the front of the line, uh, Sternberg is slightly further than we went last time. We cut off at Tutzing last time. We're going about 12 kilometers further to Sternberg. So we have a little bit of a longer drive today, but supposedly it's not going to be as hard. Let's uh, hope that that is the case. Time to let pastures board. Yes, it is. And uh, put the reverser up. I don't know if I have headlights on or if I even really need them, but we'll just turn them on anyway. And let's take a look at the train before we leave for uh, Sternberg. Almost forgot the reverser. Departing away from Garmisch Park Parchenkirchen, we are heading to our first stop at Farchant. Our speed limit right now is 40 kilometers per hour. I'll get ourselves a little close to that quickly. I'll bring us then up to 50 and I'll bring up our itinerary so you can see what we're doing. As I have to wait to go to 100 until a little bit after the sign disappears. The reason for that is because it's gonna disappear a little early. Watch on the HUD below. And it disappears as it reaches my train, so we have to wait just a little bit longer to get out of the zone. And now we can go up to 100. Let's bring up the itinerary as I speed up, and I'm going to have to watch that quickly. You can see that I have 13 tasks. The first one is already completed. And that task was not under timetable, so I got no score for that. The 12 tas tasks coming up are what my score is going to be based on. So we're going to be going at a 100 kilometer per hour speed limit now. I am close to that limit now. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed at 
at my nice casual clip here because this is a single line track. We don't have any uh, problems in being expected here and we're already a kilometer down the line having started our journey. I'm going to try to call out more features today, though. I haven't written down the names of the lakes and streams we're going to see. I have written down some of the highways we cross and things like that, just a few of them. And uh, I've tried to get some information on some of the junctions. So I'm going to try to give you more information today as we go along as to what we're seeing. You couldn't really see it in the dark during the stormy scenario. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try to uh, explain all this today. So we just crossed Highway B23. Highway B23 eventually meets the uh, B2. We're going to see the B2 as we cross that one very soon. Right now I believe the B2 is on our right. There's a slight lag here and there. I apologize for that. There's nothing I can really do about that. So we're going to have to accept that that's there unfortunately. I am, after all, playing on high quality, so there's going to be a small amount of loading lag. So I sold down a little earlier than planned there. I'm going to go ahead and maintain speed at this point as I come up to Farchant Station. We are early anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to be good for our time. We can get to the end of this platform if we want to. So we have, we have lots of time to do this. So I started slowing down a little bit more. We're now four kilometers into our journey. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply a sharper brake application. I took them off for a moment because I was checking our bearings, but it turns out we still need a really sharp application now. We're gonna blow past these guys. They're gonna have to come catch us. And there we are, arrival at Farchant Station. <laughs> departing Farchant Station, we are departing at a speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour. And we are about uh, three and a half or so kilometers from our next stop, which is Obero. We're going to be crossing. We're going to be crossing Highway B2 in a moment, and uh, Highway B2 is the going to be going alongside us to our uh, left. Actually, we might have already crossed it. We may have already crossed it. But I, I don't think that is correct. That might be it right there, actually. That was Highway B2, I believe, that we just crossed. You can now see the traffic over there. We're coming up on a 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction. We will meet that in time. We have a lot of time to do so. We have better braking power today because it is such nice weather out, so I'm going to actually come a little closer to the sign than you might normally like. I'm going to do a minimal brake application, then I will increase the brake application to slow down in time. There's our warning for the 60. So I'm going to go ahead and do a minimal brake application now. That's actually faster than I thought. I just described something I'm not doing. <laughs> there we go. 93 kilometers speed board we've now passed.
We have made it down to 60 in time. In fact, I'm going to have to put another break application to get under that because it's trying to stay above it. But there we go. We have a yellow signal. Now, we this is not a distance signal, so the PZB buttons do not apply. Either that or I haven't disabled one, I just don't know it. But so the PZB buttons are currently not applying. Now the reason we are under the, P the uh, yellow signal here is because there is a train coming into the station up ahead, just like we are. In fact, you can see him right here. He's coming to a stop right about there. We're going to let him onto this track and he's going to take the place of us on that track when we finish our stop. We're going to pull up here to where these people are located and we're going to come to a stop. They're just walking, which, okay. I probably should have gone a little further to the platform, but we're going to go ahead and take what we have here. Uh, somebody basically holding his hand out saying, yep, yeah, let us on please. Oh, now he's looking at his phone. Okay. We'll let him on. Arrival at Oberon. Leaving Obero Platform 2, we, our next stop is Eschenlo. We are about six and a half kilometers or so from that. Now, it looks like we are in, in a 100 kilometer per hour speed limit, but as we leave the station, we pass a sign advising 60 kilometers, and we have to respect that sign and obey that sign. So there it is right now. After the tracks merge, the, uh, there is no indication on the track of this but the speed will go up to 100 kilometers per hour after the track merge. Again, there's no indication of this, so you just have to know it's coming if you're driving by memory. And there it is right there. You can see that it has gone up. We are gonna go ahead and increase now to 100 kilometers per hour. That is the governing speed limit uh, for a lot of the distance up to uh, Eschenlo. So the B2 is over on our left again. We will eventually be crossing this highway at some point up on the, up further up the line again. So it's just kind of uh, staying along with us so each road gives some scenic uh, views as we go through the mountain here. mountain over to our left there. You can see that really steep bank there that uh, provides a nice backdrop of scenery for uh, picture takers on this train. They chose a good day to ride the train. And also I was looking up the fares for this train as of the date of recording. Uh, I believe from Munich all the way to uh, Garmisch is a 12 euro uh, price. So not bad for to go 100 kilometers. I actually pay more than that for gas to drive 100 kilometers here in North America. So uh, that's a pretty good price to drive by train. And if they, uh, it's too bad that Britain prices are a lot higher. I don't know what the price, for, again, I'm basing it on a four and a half hour journey I saw between uh, two cities that are far apart. So a four and a half hour or 400 and so, or so mile journey. So maybe I'm wrong on the price being high. It was about 108 pounds, I believe, for that journey. Um, if you consider gas, it might be somewhere in that ballpark, but considering it's a, a bulk uh, commuter situation, you would think that they would make it a little cheaper to try to uh, draw more people to take the train rather than driving. If it's cheaper to drive by train than it is to drive by car, people have a reason to take the train and hail a cab if they need it. So the 12, the 12 euro price tag for this train in, uh, I'm going to lower it to a 60 kilometer per hour speed limit coming up. But the 12 euro price tag for me, I would see I would see that as reason to take this train if I were living in Germany. If I were going to go to uh, Garmisch, I'd uh, 
visiting someone in garbage, I'd take the train and then I'd take the train back. It's going to cost me about the same in gas both ways. Maybe a little more in gas. So that's something that uh, the train companies could do to try to encourage more people to take the train uh, by removing the uh, higher cost to take advantage of the public transit. That's the reason that I think I don't really like taking airplanes because airplane fees, you can easily pay three, 400 just to go fly for a while and uh, land two hours later. And yeah, it's quick and convenient, but at the same time, um, it's um, not as personal. You're just up in the sky, you're basically reading a magazine, an in-flight magazine, and that's, or watching an in-flight movie, and that's all you're doing. So it's kind of uh, impersonal being in the sky, whereas on a train, you can just, it's, unlike when you drive, you can just go along on a train as a passenger and just take pictures of the scenery as you go by. And you can see some interesting things outside the window sometimes as you go by. So I like the idea of taking the train. It just has to be affordable. And I think in Germany, they're clearly making efforts to do that with a price like this on this kind of train. Going all the way to Munich from uh, Garmisch and vice versa. I'd like to see more people take the train. But unfortunately, in, in uh, Canada, there seems to be a uh, heavy favoring of using cars to go anywhere. Via Rail doesn't see as much business as you might think they would as someone from Britain. So we are arriving at Eschen Low Station right now. We have entered a 110 km per hour speed limit, so we are going to have that as we leave the station. For now, we're going to come to a stop here a little before the building. I probably should have gone to the building. But uh, we have arrived at Eschen Lo. Too late, sir. <laughs> I don't have control over that, unfortunately. I'd let him on. Uh, we are leaving uh, under... It looks like we have a bit of a white signal underneath the green. I don't remember specifically what that means. Maybe it means the next signal is closer than usual. Uh, I'll have to look up the signals for you on that. In the meantime, we are leaving at 110 kilometers per hour. And there is the green signal. We have a clear green at this point. So yeah, the white probably means that the signal was closer than the previous, than it would normally be. Crossing a river here. So there is a line for, from the uh, from the Wordenfels gravel quarry that used to run in this area. That line was dismantled in 2007. I don't know if we're going to see any evidence of that line as we go along here. So uh, we may or may not see any evidence of that. So I, didn't, I don't know if I mentioned our next stop is Olstadt, which is uh, now about two and a half kilometers from the station. You can see it on the HUD. Or from where we are, not from the station. So we're getting a countdown. Three, two, one to something. Just indicating our next signal is still green. Which it would have to be at this point. We're on this track by ourselves. So or what so one would hope. Crossing another river here. Now, I've not been going right at the speed limit, so this might cost us in terms of our time a little bit, but it looks like we are still going to be on time, so I'm not too concerned. We are still green here. And I'm just letting the speed go down naturally. I'm not even going to worry about the fact that we're going down early. As we are on an uphill, we should be slowing down shortly anyway. There's a train waiting for us. So we got out of his way quickly.
We are on our schedule anyway, as you can see, so I'm not too concerned. I'm sure he realizes that too. So we're going to try to stop in front of this building here, which means I'm going to go forward a little bit more, and let's stop right there. Arrival at Oldstadt. from Old Stat Station, Platform 1. We are now on our way to our next stop, which is Murno. Murno is about uh, four, I'm uh, sorry, six and a quarter kilometers away from where we are at this time. Our speed limit leaving the station is 80 kilometers per hour, which I almost broke there. I thankfully caught it as I was talking. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get into a 120 kilometer hour segment coming up here. There we go. I was just kind of playing with it a little bit there, but we are in it now. We're going to soon be entering an 80 kilometer per hour restriction. Now this bridge coming up here, you see, this bridge is in fact the uh, A95. The A95 is now crossing over us. We're going to have to go down to another 80 kilometer per hour speed restriction in about a kilometer from here. So I'm going to go ahead and start restricting for that as we get closer to the board. And now is a good time to start doing that. We do have a natural uphill which is going to help finish the job for us. But let's see if we can lose a little bit of that before we get to that. I think we are on track to lose our speed in time. So we're on good pace for that. I'm actually going to go ahead and ease off the brakes because of our natural uphill which is going to finish the job. Oh, ne never mind, we need a little bit more. There we go, I stand corrected. Now, I don't know if I actually, I don't think I have the name of this bridge. I don't know what bridge this is, so I can't speak for that, unfortunately. But what I can speak for is we are passing the site, and I did not realize this at the time of the uh, previous scenario, but this is an old, old station we're going to be going through. We're going through the ruins of um, Heschendorf. Heschendorf Station. Or Henschendorf, sorry. Henschendorf Station. So the track doubles here. And uh, you can see the station isn't really here anymore. The platforms have uh, been deconstructed. So there is nothing else here to show the station was previously here, except for the track doubling where the station would have started, as with other stations on this route. The track does stay doubled at this point, so it does remain as a uh, two-way track from here, for a little ways anyway. We are coming to a very steep gradient. This is a 1 in 38 gradient, so I'm going to be trying to maintain my speed up this gradient, which means I have to apply the throttle at a level that I would normally, normally be comfortably gaining speed at, and I'm trying to do it to maintain speed at this 80 km per hour speed limit. However, there is a 60 km speed li limit coming up that we also have to abide by. So as we come towards the top of the screen, I am going to go ahead and ease off the throttle so I can start slowing down naturally without having to hit the brakes. But I have the station right after that anyway, so I'm going to have to hit the brakes anyway. So for that reason, I've gone ahead and eased off the throttle a little bit now. We're going to lose a little bit of the speed now. I believe this is the B2 crossing us. So the B2 is now crossing us again. And 
the B2 is going to continue to the right. It's eventually going to be off of our map. There is a line joining us here. I'm going to give you the information on that in a second once I actually get myself uh, down to speed here because I need to get down to 60. There we go. I need to actually get ready to stop too. So the line joining us was in fact the um, Amergal Railway that was joining us. The Amergal Railway. We're going to go ahead and stop right here. And as soon as I come to a stop, I will open the doors. Arrival at Murnau. Leaving Murno. Our next stop is going to be at Ufing Am Staffelsi, and that is uh, about six and a half kilometers from where we are. Or is it five and a half? Sorry, five and a half kilometers from where we are. We are under a 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction, which I am trying to abide by here. We're going to soon be entering, as you see, a 110 km per hour speed restriction. This little spur you see off to the right, this extra track you see, this goes towards something I have called the Unterwerk Murno Spur Line. So there is a uh, industrial building here of some sort here. Looks like a greenhouse or something. It looks like they uh, used to do uh, some kind of shipments from this when there was freight on this line at some point in the past. There is currently no freight on this line, so that shed I'm pretty sure just remains locked. The track was never lifted, so the shed just stays there. I'm not sure if it is used for storage of any uh, of anything for by the railway or not, but I'm assuming because it's a company building, probably not. For those wondering where we are in terms of uh, altitude above sea level, where it's at Murno, we were 692 uh, meters above sea level. So the meters do, of course, change between the different stations here. I may know of a few where there are some uphill and downhill gradients, but there's not uh, there's not that much variance. We're talking like within a couple hundred meters along the entire route, so it's not a huge uphill or downhill journey in any way. It is uphill going towards Garmisch. Uh, from Munich, but uh, only by a couple hundred meters. So I'm going a little slower than I intended, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of speed back on. We are going to be early for our stop anyway, so I don't really care too much. But we're going to put the speed back on because we should be coming in as we can. Now I'm going to go ahead and start braking, because again, we are early. And actually that, I cut off a lot quicker than I expected to. So I'm going to go ahead and just accelerate again. A little bit less professional of a uh, job coming into this station, but if we're on time, who cares? Just losing speed naturally now, but we have to slow down soon anyway, so I'm going to start doing that now. Now, as we come into the station, there is a building I believe that has a clock here. 
I'm gonna wanna stop next to that building. There it is. That white circle you see is the clock. And we're gonna be stopping here in just about the right place. People waiting here, perfect. They'll be pleased that we came right to them. And arrival at Ufing M. Strafelsey. Departing Ufo Um, excuse me, Ufo Um Strafelsee, our next stop is Hugelfing, and that is about seven kilometers away. We are under a 140 kilometer per hour speed limit. Now, if you remember the stormy night scenario where we were driving late at night and we were trying to get our bearings around us, having never been here before, you may remember that there was a mysterious 60 per hour, 60 kilometer per hour speed limit around a signal. Well, it's here too. It's here too. That's all I can say. We're going to assume that that signal is a 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction. But of course, we're going to try to look for an indication of that before we confirm that. So right now we're going, uh, getting close to our 140 kilometer per hour limit. We're going to cut it back to 100. We're going to start breaking a little less than a uh, kilometer before the sign here. So we can get down in time. You can see the 140 right after that, but that's probably going to be irrelevant. There's the 10 warning us about the speed restriction. So since we got a warning for it, I'll go ahead and I'll start breaking now. A little heavier, please. Try to take advantage of as much speed as I can here, as long as I can. And we are down in time. I've now eased off on the brakes. And I am just uh, idling at this point. We're going to be getting an indication soon if there is indeed a 60 at that signal. If there is, we're not going to be able to get up for the 140, which ends at the station anyway. This is the countdown, I believe, to that warning, or maybe just to the speed change to 140. So there is a signal there, a flashing green. Notice it shows a six underneath. It kind of lagged as it went past, but I saw the six on it, so we have to slow down to 60. So the flashing green was indicating the speed change. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves down to 60 in time for the signal, which, so that signal is now basically a 60 kilometer per hour speed board. And again, I'm down a little quicker than I thought, so I'm trying to maintain a little bit of that speed as much as I can. Now get us down to 60 in time for the signal, but we are on a little bit of a downhill gradient still, so it is still affecting us. We have gotten off that downhill gradient. Well, no, we have. We're still on a 1 in 55, so we are still going to be affected by that. So we're coming into a Hugel thing, and we're gaining speed with the brakes on. There you go. This downhill gradient is still affecting us quite heavily, but it's starting to smooth out. As we are coming into the station, they tend to smooth out as we come into stations. A 
we are well on time for our arrival today, so there's going to be no problem with us stopping the train on time here at Hugolfing. I didn't mean to break there, but uh, let's put the speed back on for a moment there. So I'm along the platform now. I'm going to come to a stop at some point here. There's a clock there. I don't have a building on this side of the platform. This side is accessed by a footbridge. So we're going to go ahead and just stop at some convenient point along the platform, probably towards the end of the platform at this point. And in fact, I think that's a good enough spot to stop. There's people walking over there. So we're going to stop at the end of the platform and we're going to allow anyone who wants to walk over to us onto the train. He's waiting for us actually. So good thing we came over here. Arrival at Google thing. Departing Hugel thing. Our next stop is Wilhelm Oberlay, Oberbay, Wilhelm Oberbay. That is in about uh, eight and a half kilometers or so. I'm going to cut off our speed quickly as our speed limit leaving the station is 60 kilometers per hour. That will quickly rise to 140. And that will govern a good portion of this next junction. Now we're going to have uh, at the bottom of our gradient here will be polling station. That station was closed again in uh, 1984 and I know I mentioned that last video. I just don't know if it's on the gradient this time or not. We're going to find out as we move along. Looks like it might not be on the gradient. It looks like they put it there in the dark to kind of orient us as to where we are. During the day, they expect us to know where it is and to uh, figure it out. But then they did show the other station on there, so maybe it is on here. We just haven't reached it yet. What I can tell you is that polling is the bottom of a gradient change. Uh, that gradient change is a 126 meter drop from Murno. Murmo, uh, Murno, yeah. I caught the uh, 140 just in time. Here, I believe, is where the station would have been. And the platforms are indeed gone. The building is still there, but the platforms are gone. So that's the end of our downhill drift here. And we are coming up quickly on Wilhelm Ober Oberbay. There will be a branch line joining us from the left. Schongau is where that line goes. We have to get down to 100 very quickly, so we'll do that right now. Looks like a wanted sign there. I got well below 100, well too early. 
So we're going to get ourselves back up to uh, speed for a moment, even though we are stopping. There's a line from Sean Gao. From Sean Gao, I was saying. Which is going to take us double track into Wilhelm Overbay. And there is a crossover track should uh, anyone leaving the station on the other side need to go over the single track. So that is how they would get off that line if need be. This is also a multi-train, uh, a multi-station platform. That suggests to me this may be a terminus uh, for some services. Or because of the branch line, they just expect more services. It might be a terminus for the branch line service. Looks like we might have a yellow signal ahead, so we're going to keep that in mind as we get ready to leave. But for now, we're going to go ahead and pull up here. We're going to come to a stop. Plenty of time, so I'm actually just kind of uh, find, picking a parking spot here. This is good enough. Arrival at Wilhelm Oberbay as the doors in one open for a second. Wilhelm Overbay. Our next stop is Tutsing, which is where we ended the last scenario. And uh, we are 13.77 kilometers away from that. We are actually under a yellow, a green over a yellow. And we are limited now to 60 kilometers per hour thanks to that signal. Now the 110 speed board disappeared, but we are not under that speed board as of right now, so we have to wait for that. It will be coming up. There it is. You have to be cautious of driving the route by memory. <laughs> or especially by the HUD, if you're paying attention to that disappearing. Happens on many routes. I know Sherman Hill is a 55 that threw me for a loop for a while because it came into effect early. So I don't know if we saw it yet, but the uh, line, a line to um, Jeltendorf went off to the left. You may have seen that. And that is why we're now on a single track. So yes, it would have gone off because we were double track up until that split. So it now went off to the left. We uh, are continuing along the single track. We will stay on a single track, passing two closed stations along the way. Those two closed stations are Wiltshofen and uh, Diemendorf, both closed in 1984. So we're going to watch for Wiltshofen first. There may not be any indication on uh, the HUD, just like with the other station, polling. But based on the mileage, I expect it to be about uh, nine and a quarter or so kilometers from our next stop where we're going to find that, the potential ruins of that station. So in about a kilometer and change from now. There is a distance signal showing green. It's also indicating the next signal is closer than it usually would be. And there indeed is that next signal with another distance signal showing a green. These signals were surely in place for the station, which is no longer here. And the track has split, so this will be where the station would have been. Looks like the station building on the left, but there's nothing else here. So that was Wiltshofen. Wiltshofen. We're going to keep an eye out next for Diemendorf. Diemendorf Station. Again, we're, it's not, it's a disused station that's no longer in use. But we're going to keep an eye out for the location.
Demondorf is about five kilometers down from where we just saw the uh, Wilshofen station location. So we're about two kilometers or so away from that now, I believe. This entire stretch is a nice 110 kilometer per hour track, which I really like. A nice long stretch where you can just go fast, because going fast is fun. Yes, I did steal that quote from someone. Thank you for saying it. There's a tractor or a heavy equipment working over on the right of us there as we pass by. I'm not sure if you noticed the picture back at the uh, station. There was actually an umbrella that was sticking through a wall. So someone got half an umbrella on their table. <laughs> Which was kind of funny. Whoops. Let's not speed, shall we? That was a countdown warning to a green signal. Of course, back in the day, you'd expect it to be possibly yellow at the station if there was a train in the way. And you can still have a delayed service in that block, so you could be forced to wait for a delayed service. You never know. Or in the block behind it. But it looks like the, station, the old station is not here because we're past that point now. So we're going to get ready to... Uh, have a line join us here. That line joining us is the uh, Kochel Am Sea. That's from Kochel Am Sea. And the line does have an eventual terminus. I didn't jot down the uh, terminus, but there is an eventual terminus on that line. It is a branch line. So the lines are going to do some interchanging of uh, pathways here. That line is currently having a yellow signal. We're under a green, so we're perfectly fine. I'm coming in slower than I would like to, but we are early, so. Not much early, but we are early. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some speed back on to make sure we stay early. Looks like he's going on the branch line. Looks like he's parked. He's in the uh, buffer stop. Having a little bit of lag as we came into Tootsie, unfortunately. So it looks like there were some things loading in there. I really wish the game would be up would be updated for a new version of Unreal to help deal with some of these loading issues. But I think they've come. DTG has come to the decision there's just too much DLC that would be almost impossible to update properly to uh, not affect negatively some of the DLC. So I think they've taken the tact that it's better not to update many aspects of the game in fear of breaking it. Which uh, I can understand, but at the same time I'm kind of upset about that because they moved on to uh, Train Sim World 2 and that's where a lot of their development is now. And I won't lie, a lot of that looks great, but uh, I kind of wish we had it here as well. In any case... Arrival at Tutsing. <laughs> Departing Tutsing, our next stop is Feldafing, which you may remember from the tutorial, Feldafing. We're now on the S-Bomb part of the network, so we're not going to be stopping at every station from here on. Just a couple more. In fact, at the itinerary, you can see that we have three left. 
And actually, no. Fe Felderfinger's not the tutorial. It's the next one. Uh, Possen happened. That's the one that uh, was from the tutorial. Actually, taking a closer look at my notes, actually we are stopping at every station. So every station from here on we are stopping at. The only one we did not stop at was the brand new one, which we went by. So, uh, actually, no, that's actually after our terminus. Never mind. So we're stopping at every uh, existing station at this point. I'm getting my notes crossed up with my memory here. We're about two and a half kilometers out now. You can see it on the HUD, uh, Felderping Station. You can see the green signal saying that we may enter. Actually, no, it says we may go to the next signal. It doesn't say yet that we may enter, but since the next signal would have to be a yellow, we are cleared into Felderping Station, so technically we may enter. That signal protects Felderping Station. So keeping an eye on the signals to make sure there's no nasty speed restrictions coming up. Those are not shown on the HUD. So I've been kind of maintaining 100 the whole way. I wanted to go up to close to 110, but I never really got up there. So I'm taking my time getting down to uh, brake speed because I know I might be losing some time here. So I'm going to take a bit of a harder tack on the brake on this one. Now we're going to remove the brakes temporarily. I did not want to gain speed. Now we're going to apply the brakes because I see the platform coming up right there. So we are arriving. You might have overshot the ideal spot a little, but this should be good enough. This should be about the right place. Let's take the uh, brakes off so it's an easier stop and arrival at Feldafing. <laughs> Departing Feldafing Station, our speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour. And we typically expect higher speed limits now that we are on the S-Bahn section of the uh, track. So we're going to proceed from here to our next stop of Possenhofen. The Possenhofen, we are going to go to Platform 2, or Gilei 2. And this, we're coming up quickly on Possenhofen. Didn't even get to 110, I'm already looking at slowing down. So we just came from 648 meters of, uh, at altitude. We're gonna be at 630 by the time we stop at Fossenhofen. And I don't, I don't know about you, but I like that name. It's just, it's just fun to say, Postenhofen. As I'm now going to be told I'm saying it wrong for some reason. I'm going to try to stop in front of the building there. 
That just seems like the right place to stop. There we are. Actually, I should have gone up to the, to the uh, end of the platform. Oh, well. We have arrived at Possenhoppen. So that's a strange timing this penalty because I actually arrived right on time and the penalty was basically zero. So now I know I'm cutting it very close as we pass the screen with a white dot under it. Which typically means the next signal is closer than usual. We're getting ourselves up to 120 kilometers per hour. There are some interesting hijinks ahead here which we're going to keep in mind. Spoiler, I already looked at it, and I wasn't happy with something that happened, so we are going to go ahead and do it properly here. So there's our green signal. We are safe to proceed at our line speed of 120 kilometers per hour. So I didn't mention our final stop is Starnberg, which I kind of said a few times already. Gile 2, or Platform 2, and we're now about three and a third miles away from there, or kilometers away from there, sorry. There is another signal coming up, and we also have the back of another signal facing us, which is for the other direction. I assume it was red since we were on the line. We have to maintain our speed along here. Now here's what's interesting. There's a 40 coming up. You see it? There it is. You see the 4 on the signal there? We have to have that down to 40 by the uh, next signal, which is now, uh, well, coming up a 3 fourths of a kilometer away. So we're dropping that thing like a stone, but I'm going to try and maintain as much as I can, as long as I can. I'm down to the 80 range now. I'm going to drop some more now. This is just to make sure I don't speed, but I can still get some of my... Uh, some of the time that I need. So three tenths of a kilometer, we gotta get down to 40 now quickly. Easing it off again for a moment, now we're gonna drop it again. One more ease, and drop it again. And we are down in time for the 40, which is also a yellow signal. Which is fine because we don't have any signals beyond here to worry about. That's the end of the platform for us. It's also the end of a nice drop in altitude from Possen, excuse me, from uh, Possenhofen. We dropped 53 miles on that hill, or meters, 53 meters on that hill. And I'm coming in slower than I wanted to, but we are moving into a 60 apparently. So we're going to see if we're allowed to take advantage of that to make our stop. Don't use speed. Don't use speed now. No, 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 no. Being a little finicky right now. We get to stay at 40, of course. Or stop it anyway, but I wanted to come in at a 50. I would have felt better. So we're just going to stop along this uh, platform area here. We don't need to go to the end of the platform. If we were to look ahead, there's going to be a red signal for us anyway, so we're good here. We don't need to go any further. Doors will open. That's the end of the scenario. Let's take a look at our train as we wrap up. So that wasn't too bad of a scenario. There were actually a little bit of additional uh, relaxations. It was a more relaxed drive than it was for the Stormy Night scenario. 
Plus, being in the daytime, you could actually observe everything. I was able to call out some of the lines and highways and things. And give it a bit more, and basically enjoy it a bit more than you would enjoy one of those nighttime scenarios. I kind of say nighttime scenarios are not fun for driving, too. Uh, or for watching, rather. Uh, they're definitely difficult for driving. Oh, hello. So anyway, we are done our scenario. Nice work. Although you had a tight, ta tight timetable to contend with. They're kind of standing around now because they missed the train. You made excellent time. Your passengers seem pleased with the views passing the lake, too. Scenario complete. There we go. Uh, 1,000 points. So, yeah, that's the end of that. I hope you liked the video. I hope you subscribe to the channel to see more like this. And, and yeah, look at that. Look at that score there on uh, the, la the second and third lines from the bottom. On time, 84. Late, 84. So basically, 84 minus 0 seconds late times 1 times 1 equals 0. <laughs> I was apparently just late on that one. Literally on the bubble for uh, losing time on that. So one second earlier, I wouldn't even have known that was the case. Oh, that's kind of funny, actually. In any case, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time. We have three more scenarios to play on this uh, map. And I'm going to go ahead and enjoy those too. So I hope to see you for those. I'm Cyclone. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is to your part of the world. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.